Hi there. Thank you very much for tuning in to Tea Time with Tawny, where I discuss a lot of different teas and a topic of the day I choose, whether it be about music, inspiration, love, or possibly the elections that are coming up in the next 25 days. We have to go until our votes are going to make a huge impact on our future. And along with voting, we like to drink, you know, some tea every day. So today I'm actually drinking a 100% uh, organic culinary grade green tea powder. And what I did was actually, I kind of failed uh, an experiment where I was trying to make some, a green tea latte, which normally you can make, but with culinary grade green tea powder, it's a little bit more bitter. So what I ended up doing was blending it in a blender with a banana and there's vitamins and I put a straw to it. So it's really yummy and it takes the bitter taste away as soon as I add the banana. I also put a little bit of pumpkin spice powder on the top. So some of the really good benefits of green tea powder involve boosting energy, burning calories, increasing your focus, and also helps in improving your skin health as well as supercharging your immune system. So right now with everything happening in our world, we want to stay as healthy and focused as we can, regardless of what's going on. When it comes to, to life and love and career and beauty and all of that, thank you for tuning in to my last couple of videos about both compassion and abundance. Now those are two, you know, words used fairly often in the world, maybe not often enough, maybe not practiced enough, but today I wanted to discuss something a little bit more, I would say, impactful in the changes which we have the choice to bring about our future and to see those changes occur. Something we need to do is be involved in the voting process in our state, which we're living in whether or not we agree with what's going on or not, especially if we don't agree with it, we have an opportunity to make a difference based on our votes. So every state every year has ballot propositions that they put onto the ballot. This year specifically, we had 13 ballot propositions that were proposed and only 12 of them are actually going onto the ballot. Now, rather than getting into every single proposition, I am here to discuss all about the music industry. So there's many propositions that are important and every single one is imperative to vote for and to understand what you're voting for. Now, if you're looking at a commercial that's saying vote yes on this proposition because this, 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 and this, and then you see something completely contradicting that says vote no on this proposition because of this, 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 and this, I encourage you to do your due diligence and your own research there is an incredible website out there you may or may not already know of, which exists currently, and that is called Ballotpedia.org. This website has so much incredible information, factual information of both sides of each proposition, which helps you decide whether or not you want to vote a yes or a no on that proposition. Particularly, there is one proposition I feel is quite imperative to discuss with you, my lovely music family today, and hopefully your impactful vote will make a difference on whether or not this ballot proposition is passed. Now, the proposition I'm talking about is proposition number 22. This is in California. So again, California proposition 22, which is app based drivers as contractors and label policies initiative. So this bill is basically, let me give you many different facets of the bill today. Again, I encourage you to go to the website, but I wanted to break down this bill in particularly for you help yourself be informed from a good perspective. That's not giving you an opinion one way or another, just giving you both sides. Now, some of what I'll discuss today is what, would app-based drivers be classified as for employment? What is Assembly Bill 5, which is also known as AB5? Who is behind the campaigns surrounding Proposition 22? What else would the ballot measure change? And then of course, uh, the ballot title, 
which the ballot title as follows, and I'll talk a little bit about the summary and also the fiscal impact of what's going on. And then, of course, the support of Proposition 22, of who wants to have a yes vote on this proposition and some of the different contributors to the proposition, as well as some arguments to why it, it um, is wanted to be yes. And then also the opposition of saying no, slam the brakes, no on 22. And it's basically the leading campaign and the opposition initiative. And I will speak of the officials and the supporters of that, as well as their arguments. And even furthermore, I encourage you, there is financial statements that actually says how much money has gone into each uh, vote, whether it's a yes or a no vote. And it's very fascinating. You'll notice if, if you actually look, you notice a lot of Democrats seem to vote where a lot of Republicans don't seem to vote because I'm just looking at the numbers. They seem a little bit lower. I'm not sure exactly what that means or why it is like that. Now, getting right into it, let's talk about this proposition, okay? So, the first piece of information to discuss is as follows. California Proposition 22, the App-Based Drivers as Contractors and Labor Policies Initiative. It's basically on the ballot in California as an initiated state statute on November 3rd, 2020, coming up in about 25 days. A yes vote supports this ballot initiative to define app-based transportation, rideshare, and delivery drivers as independent contractors and adopt labor and wage policies specific to app-based drivers and companies. A no vote opposes this ballot initiative, meaning California Assembly Bill 5 from 2019 could be used to decide whether app-based drivers are employees or independent contractors. What would app-based drivers be classified as for employment? Proposition 22 would consider app-based drivers to be independent contractors and not employees or agents. Therefore, the ballot measure would override Assembly Bill 5, also known as AB 5, signed in September 2019 on the question of whether app-based drivers are employees or independent contractors. The ballot initiative would define app-based drivers as workers who A, provide delivery services on an on-demand basis through a business's online enabled application or platform, B, use a personal vehicle to provide pre-arranged transportation services for compensation via a business's online enabled application or platform. Examples of companies that are app-based drivers and hire app-based drivers include Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash. The ballot measure would not affect how AB5 is applied to other types of workers. If you're a professional musician, you've definitely heard of AB5, as there is a lot of discussion groups that have happened and formed online since the measure was put into place. So let me just talk a little bit about what AB5 is. AB5 established a three-factor test to decide a worker's status as an independent contractor. The three-factor test requires that one, the worker is free from the hiring company's control and direction in the performance of work. Two, the worker is doing work that is outside the company's usual course of business. And three, the worker is engaged in an established trade occupation or business of the same nature as the work performed. Responding to AB5, Tony West, the chief legal officer for the ride-sharing business Uber Technology stated, because we continue to believe drivers are properly classified as independent and because we'll continue to be responsive to what the vast majority of drivers tell us they want most, flexibility, drivers will not automatically be reclassified as employees. We expect we will continue to respond to claims of misclassification in arbitration and in court as necessary, just as we do now. Likewise, John Zimmer, president of Lyft said, we are focused on operating as we are. On August 10th, 
2020, the Superior Court of San Francisco ruled that Uber and Lyft violated AB5 and misclassified their workers. Attorney General Javier Becerra responded. The court has weighed in and agreed. Uber and Lyft need to put a stop to unlawful misclassification of their drivers while our litigation continues. Both Uber and Lyft stated that unless the court's ruling was postponed, their companies could suspend app-based operations within California. On August 20th, 10 days later, the California First District Court of Appeal stayed Superior Court Judge Shulman's ruling from taking effect. Now you want to know who's behind these campaigns because that's really important. On August 30th of 2019, three companies, DoorDash, Lyft, and Uber, each placed $30 million into campaign accounts to fund a ballot initiative campaign should the legislator pass AB5 without compromising the companies. We remain focused on reaching a deal and are confident about bringing this issue to the voters if necessary, said Lyft spokesperson Adrian Durbin. Governor Gavin Newsom signed AB5 on September 18th without an exemption for app-based drivers and employers. The ballot initiative was filed on October 29, 2019. Brandon Castillo, a spokesperson for the campaign supporting the initiative, stated, We're going to spend what it takes to win. It's been widely reported that three of the companies already shifted $90 million, but we're still in the early phases. The bottom line is we're committed to passing this. The companies Instacart by Maple Bear Incorporated and Postmates also joined this campaign. Through September 23rd, 2020, Yes on Proposition 22 received $184 million, which is the most funds that an initiative campaign has ever received in California, not adjusted for inflation. Uber contributed $50 million, Lyft provided $48 million, DoorDash contributed $47 million, Instacart $28 million, and Postmates provided $11 million. The campaign No on Proposition 22 received $10.7 million. The International Brotherhood of Teamsters, SEIU, UHW West, Service Employees International Union, United Food and Commercial Workers Local 770, and United Food and Commercial Workers Western States Issues, PAC, Labor Unions or Union Affiliated Committees were the top five donors on Proposition 22. What else would this ballot measure change? Since Proposition 22 would consider app-based drivers to be independent contractors and not employees, state employment-related labor laws would not cover app-based drivers. Proposition 22 would enact labor and wage policies that are specific to app-based drivers and companies, including payments for the difference between a worker's net earnings, excluding tips and the net earnings floor based on 120% of the minimum wage applied to a driver's engaged time and 30 cents adjusted for inflation after 2021 per engaged mile. Limiting app-based drivers from working more than 12 hours during a 24-hour period unless the driver has been logged off for an uninterrupted six hours. For drivers who average at least 25 hours of work per week of engaged time during a calendar quarter require companies to provide health care subsidies equal to 82% the average California covered CC premium for each month. For drivers who average between 15 and 25 hours per week of engaged time during a calendar quarter require companies to provide health care subsidies equal to 41% the average CC premium for each month. Require companies to provide or make available occupational accident insurance to cover at least $1 million in medical expenses and lost income resulting from injuries suffered while a driver was online. Defined as when the driver is using the app and can receive service requests but not engaged in personal activities. 
required the occupational accident insurance to provide disability payments of 66% of the driver's average weekly earnings during the previous four weeks before the injury suffered. While the driver was online but not engaged in personal activities for upwards of 104 weeks, which is about two years. Require companies to provide or make available accidental death insurance for the benefit of the driver's spouse, children, or other dependents when the driver dies while using this app. Proposition 22 would define a driver's engaged time as the time between accepting a service request and completing the request. The CEO, Dara Kosrashai, said, what Proposition 22 is about is starting to move into the best of two worlds. You've got flexibility, you're your own boss, you're your own CEO, but you do have protections. In Rigging the Gig, researchers with the Partnership for Working Families and National Employment Law Project wrote, the benefits contained in the initiative pale in comparison to what workers are entitled to under the state law. Proposition 22 would also require the companies to develop anti-discrimination and sexual harassment policies, develop training programs for drivers related to driving traffic, accident avoidance, and recognizing and reporting sexual assault and misconduct, have zero tolerance policies for driving under the influence of drugs or alcohol, and require criminal background checks for drivers. The ballot initiative would criminalize false impersonation of an app-based driver as a misdemeanor. Amending Proposition 22 would require a 7 8 which is 87.5% vote in each chamber of the California State Legislature of the governor's signature, provided that the amendment is consistent with and furthers the purpose of Proposition 22. Changes that are not considered consistent with are furthering the purpose of Proposition 22 would need voter approval. Ballot measure is as follows. Exempts app-based transportation and delivery companies from providing employee benefits to certain drivers initiative statute. Now the ballot summary is as follows. Classifies drivers for app-based transportation, also rideshare, and delivery companies as independent contractors, not employees. Unless company sets driver's hours, requires acceptance of specific ride and delivery requests, or restricts working for other companies. Independent contractors are not covered by various state employment laws, including minimum wage, overtime, unemployment insurance, and workers' compensation. Instead, Independent contractor drivers would be entitled to other compensation, including minimum earnings, health care subsidies, and vehicle insurance. Restricts certain local regulation of app-based drivers. Criminalizes impersonation of drivers. The fiscal impact statement as follows. Minor increases in state income taxes paid by rideshare and delivery company drivers and investors. There's also the full text of the ballot initiative, which you could look at on the website. And there's also a reliability score that talks about how reliable the score is. So many supporters of this bill, yes on 22, to save app-based jobs and services, and basically is leading the campaign in support of the ballot initiative right now. So many supporters. Um, basically, Save App-Based Jobs and Services provided a list of supporters, which is available right here on the website. Unions, California Peace Officers Association, and also the California State Sheriff's Association. Corporations, DoorDash, Lyft, and Uber. Organizations, Cal Asian Chamber of Commerce, California Chamber of Commerce, California NAACP State Conference, California State National Action Network, and the National Bank Chambers of Commerce, California Police Chiefs Association, Instacart and Postmates, California Black Chamber of Commerce, California Hispanic Chambers of Commerce, California Small Business Association, Crime Victims United of California, and National Taxpayers Union. 
There are a few arguments also about yes on this proposition. Tikoy Porter, who is the president of the National Action Network from Sacramento, uh, the Sacramento chapter, he quoted, app-based driving is under threat. That's why we need this ballot measure to pass, to end the uncertainty and make sure people maintain the ability to earn money on their own terms, whether their schedules allow even after this pandemic has passed. Protect app-based drivers and services, quoted, if rideshare companies and delivery drivers are focused to be classified as employees with set shifts, it could significantly limit the availability and affordability of these on-demand services that benefit consumers, small businesses, and our economy. In addition, current law for independent contractors denies companies the ability to provide many workplace protections, such as guaranteed hourly earnings and benefits. State law also makes it difficult for rideshare and delivery service companies to implement many customer and public safety protections. Dara Khosro Shahi, who is the CEO of Uber, quotes, why not just treat drivers as employees? Some of our critics argue that doing so would make drivers problems vanish overnight. It may seem like a reasonable assumption, but it's one that I think ignores a stark reality. Uber would only have full-time jobs for a small fraction of our current drivers and only be able to operate in many fewer cities than today currently. Rides would be much more expensive, which would significantly reduce the number of rides people could take and, in turn, the number of drivers would need to provide those trips. Uber would not be as widely available to riders and drivers who would lose the flexibility they have today if they became employees. And also, there are even official arguments, which you can peruse on, on your own, um, which talks about how the problem is a drastic new legislation threatens to make it illegal for app-based drivers to work as independent contractors. And that essentially they're prohibiting independent contract work for app-based drivers, and it would eliminate hundreds of thousands of jobs. The opposition, uh, basically, with all the officials that are supporting this, please do make sure you do your due diligence and research the yes and the no's. The supporters of this uh, are Kamala Harris, who is, as you know, running for vice president right now, Elizabeth Warren, the Massachusetts US Senator, Anthony Rendon, Speaker of the State Assembly, some former officials, Joe Biden, who's the former vice president running for the president of the United States, and then some unions, uh, California Labor Federation, California State Council of Laborers, California Teachers Association, SEIU California State Council, State Building and Construction Trades Council of California, Transport Workers Union of America, Unite Here, United Food and Commercial Workers Western States Council. Now their arguments are <laughs> Assemblywoman Lorena Gonzalez, is the legislative author of AB5, if you did or not, did not know this. She has quoted, these billion dollar corporations still refuse to offer their workers what every other employee in California is entitled to, earning the minimum wage for all hours worked, social security, normal reimbursements for their costs, overtime pay, and the right to organize. Art. Pulaski, chief officer of the California Labor Federation, quotes, this measure is another brazen attempt by some of the richest corporations in California to avoid playing by the same rules as all other law-abiding companies in our state. The CEOs spin this ballot measure as a benefit to workers, but their corporate Hail Mary falls short. It steals protections and pay their employees are entitled to under current law. Rebecca Smith, the director of the Work Structures Portfolio in the National Employment Law Project. These companies have lost in the legislative process. They've lost in court. Now this is the last ditch, but well-funded effort to permanently take control of all terms and conditions of employment for their workers or of their workers. If it's successful, corporations in any industry would know 
that with enough cash and enough spin, you can buy your way to deregulation. Chris Malloy Fields Figuerdo, Executive Director of the Ballot Initiative Strategy Center. The people who are suffering the most right now in the middle of a pandemic and a racial reckoning are the ones who are going to lose the most if this initiative passes. There's also official arguments on this saying that Uber and Lyft and DoorDash paid to put this proposition on the ballot. They hired lawyers to write the misleading initiative and paid political operatives millions to collect the voters' signatures needed. Why? To create a special exemption for themselves that will legally deny their drivers basic rights and protections at work like paid sick leave, workers' compensation, and unemployment benefits. Proposition 22 only applies to Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, and other app-based delivery and transportation companies. The Attorney General even recently sued them for breaking the law and for uh, relentlessly avoiding responsibility to their drivers for years. So it's a really big decision to make. And the reason I wanted to discuss this particular proposition today was because me as a professional musician and all of you professional artists out there, whether or not you work on film, on television, you're in a professional orchestra. And right now, you know, you've either had your pay deducted, you've um, gone on unemployment, or you're an independent contractor currently who doesn't have one job but works many different jobs for many different companies. And something that relates so much to these Uber and Lyft and DoorDash drivers is professional musicians is our jobs are extremely different on a regular basis if we're independent contractors. Now, there is a difference that I think is quite misleading in our industry. And I believe, you know, making your vote correct for the president is huge and very important and imperative for our future. I don't believe that some of the people who are possibly on this proposition to vote no on it are fully considering people and individuals who are actually independent contractors. Although I, I am seeing in the law, it says that that is recognized and based on this, this AB5 law qualifications to test whether or not you're an independent contractor, mostly every single musician and artist I know is an independent contractor. Some of us have full-time jobs, some of us have part-time jobs. If we teach, we don't just teach one person. If we teach as a professor at a school, we don't just teach most of the time at one school. If we're working in a junior college or a high school or a middle school, sometimes teachers can have up to five schools they work at. And so do you become an employee of each one of those schools? Well, that's, that's great, but it gets to be quite difficult as you have a lot of expenses that incur when you're an employee and you get paid a salary or an hourly rate versus when you're an independent contractor, the expenses you have is just extremely different. And wavering on this proposition is a really big decision. So I urge you to do your due diligence. You know, yes, there's lawsuits. Yes, there's things you know, just like just like the presidency right now. And with everything that we're seeing going on in our world with the virus, we know scientists are right. Of course, they're right. And that's what we need to be listening to. So I encourage you today, as I do in all of my videos, just be you, be yourself, be well informed of these elections. And I really, really do encourage you to vote early with your, your mail-in ballot. We are living in such an uh, incredible time and there are a lot of opportunities we have here to make a difference for tomorrow. So please vote and vote for what you truly believe in, vote for the changes you want to see, and vote for a better tomorrow. Thank you again and again for joining me, for subscribing to this channel. I hope you've enjoyed this patriotic music as we are all under one nation and we need to have superheroes running our nation. So have a wonderful day on that note and I will see you soon.